Hi, I'm Mark Lubers, Westbred Technical Product Manager for the Central Plains, and today I'm going to talk to you about spring freeze injury and winter wheat. It's the second week of April, I'm in South Central Kansas, we've had a number of warm consecutive days, but the last few nights we've dipped down into some freezing temperatures, and that's pretty common this time of year throughout Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, where we have warm days, a cold front moves through, the growing point on this wheat crop is above the ground, and sets us up for the potential risk of having some freeze injury. Now there's two factors we need to keep in mind uh, when it comes to spring freeze injury, and that's temperature and growth stage. Um, this chart illustrates that as the wheat plant continues to develop, the growing point moves up through the plant, and as it does so, it loses its ability to withstand colder temperatures, with flowering being the most sensitive time that a wheat plant is to cold temperatures. Now you can also expect to see uh, more damage in lower lying areas as when cold air moves in, it'll settle in those areas and stay longer, increasing our chance for freeze injury um, in those particular parts of the field. Now there's a couple other factors we need to keep in mind, uh, what I call insulation factors, and there's two that can help us. Now those two are warm temperatures or warm days prior to that freeze event, so building up some thermal energy in the soil, helping keep that canopy warmer. The other is soil moisture. So if we have adequate soil moisture, that'll act as a buffer to also help keep those canopy temperatures stabilized. Now there's three factors that can work against us, and that's wind at or prior, prior to or at the time of the freeze event where it moves that thermal energy out of the canopy, lowering the canopy temperature. Uh, high amounts of residue can also cause us issues where it trap, acts as a blanket and traps that, that soil heat in the soil or as cold air settles down, it hits that layer and just kind of stays there right around where that growing, that growing point's gonna be located. Thin stands is also another uh, factor that may increase damage. So if you have more area around that plant that cold air can move in, um, that can also be detrimental uh, to those growing points. So that's why it's important uh, at fall planting time that we're increasing our seeding rates appropriately as we move later into planting and that we're also planting the appropriate seeds per acre uh, based on the variety that you're planting in your field. So what do you do if you suspect that you've had a freeze event? Well, first of all, several universities do an excellent job of publishing bulletins this time of year where they pull mesonet data, um, they highlight the low temperatures, how many hours spent at that temperature, and where at in your particular state those low temperatures occurred. So my first recommendation would be to, to look for those bulletins. The next thing is you're gonna to have to wait about seven to 10 days. That's generally how long it takes for injury symptoms to show up. Uh, the next thing is, so you've waited your seven to 10 days, go scout your field. Um, pick representative spots throughout the field, not just the low spots, but the side slopes, the high points. Let's get a good representation of the, of the potential injury that we have in that field. Now each spot you go to, pick about five to 10 plants and check all the tillers on those plants to see exactly what sort of damage that you have. Now, if the plants haven't headed out, you're gonna to have to split the stems open uh, to find that growing point. So a healthy growing point is gonna be a whitish green color, a damaged growing point is gonna be a tannish or brown color. Now, if the freeze event occurred at the flag leaf or boot stage, typically, typically you're gonna see uh, this trapped head effect where the, where the wheat head is curled over, um, or you might see some whitish discoloration on the head. If the freeze event occurred at or after flowering, um, that's gonna affect the ability for that grain to develop. So if it's at flowering, you're not gonna get any grain develop, development. If it's after flowering, you're typically, uh, during grain fill, for example, you're gonna see some shriveled kernels, which is ultimately gonna severely impact our yield. So <clears throat> oftentimes, Freeze damage is reported as a percent, so 20, 30, 40%. Um, and really what I'm after is how many tillers have survived that freeze event. So if we figure 60 to 70 tillers per square foot um, is what you need for a 60 to 70 bushel yield goal, I mean, that's just kind of a, a rule of thumb. Um, and you had 80 tillers to begin with and you have 20% freeze damage, now we're at 64 tillers. So we're still within that range of having our having achieve our full uh, potential on that on that wheat crop. Now keep in mind uh, the primary head and the main tillers 
uh, contribute more to yield, they're going to be further developed and more prone to injury. So it's not a complete one-to-one -one ratio, but it'll at least help you make a decision on your next steps uh, on what to do with that wheat crop. <clears throat> so when it comes to managing your wheat crop for spring freeze injury, it really begins at planting time and variety selection. So generally speaking, later maturing varieties are going to break dormancy later and be less prone to any sort of freeze event that happens in the springtime. Now this brings me to another point. I always recommend planting at least two to three varieties on your farm. Um, not only will it help with other agronomic characteristics like disease management, but it'll help with time management, harvest, and it'll also protect, your, uh, protect you when it comes to um, spring freeze events. Now, if you've scattered your field, you've determined you know, how many tillers are available, and you have only a minimal amount of damage, by all means, keep that crop, manage it like you normally would, and take it to harvest. If you've scattered your fields and you've determined that you've had too much damage, you have a couple options. You can destroy it by uh, haying it or silaging it. Now, if you do that and all your nitrogen has been applied to your wheat crop, uh, make sure you're testing for nitrates before you feed that. <clears throat> the next option is to destroy it and plant a fall harvested crop. Now, if you do that and you've applied a herbicide to the wheat crop, Make sure you're checking that label to see what sort of recrop interval that you have. Now, no one freeze event is the same. If it happens, be patient, scout your fields, and I hope this video will help you uh, understand some of the things you need to do um, to find the best solution for your particular situation.